This is Chris McDaniels. Like, subscribe, subscribe to Team W Wrestling on YouTube, subscribe to my other channel, Word of Chris, and subscribe to this channel, Chris McDaniels. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and both of my TikToks. They'll all be down there in the, in the description box. And I'm here to do my WWE Monday Night Raw, June 3rd, 2024 reviews. So here we go discussing about tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw. Now we kick off the show with the WWE Women's World Champion, Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan comes down as she was talking about um, welcome everybody to the Liv Morgan Revenge Tour. That's what she was saying. And then she starts talking about what she's been up to and she says that you know at king and queen of the ring she became the new R women's world champion and then she says that pretty much she put becky lynch into early retirement last week on raw after she defeated her in a steel cage match to retain her title and all that but then she says that like she says that she's going to be taking everything for away from rhea ripley and that includes dominic mysterio because last week you know dominic was enjoy that kiss you know so yeah, that's what Liv Morgan was saying, but then all of a sudden she gets interrupted by Dominic Mysterio. Dominic comes down to the ring, and pretty much he gra he had the mic in his hands, and he starts talking to Liv, telling her that, you know, she better be careful because Mommy's going to kill her when she comes back. So yeah, that's what Dominic says, and then uh, Liv was talking about how, oh, if she kills me, not only she's going to do that, but she's going to be killing you too, huh? So yeah, that's what she says, and then she says that, she already said that she's going to be taking everything away from Rhea Ripley, and she says that Dominic is one of them, too. So, yeah, that's what Liv Morgan was saying. And then Liv actually backs Dominic up into the corner and says that, you know, you enjoyed it last week. And then all of a sudden, he starts, she starts, like, putting her hand in, her, in his hair, rubbing it, and then going down to his chest and lower and lower. And the crowd was reacting pretty crazy up until uh, Cock Block and Finn Balor comes down <laughs> Uh, Finn Balor just comes down and he puts a stop to that and Finn was like no no you don't be doing that and then Liv was like well you know I can do whatever I want pretty much and Finn was like get out of here and then Liv was like uh, I don't think Dominic wants me out of here and then she goes like you know what fine I'll leave and then she gets on the ring apron rubs his hair one more time and apparently Dominic likes it and then Liv walks away so yeah that's what happened there pretty funny stuff Dominic loving it. Uh, but yeah, then after that, we see a segment backstage where we see Jackie Redman interviewing Sheamus backstage. And Sheamus was talking about how he's going to be facing Ludwig Kaiser tonight on Raw up next, actually. And he says that, you know, the only respect that Ludwig is going to get if he can throw on bangers at the bangers and stuff. So yeah, that's what Sheamus says. Sheamus starts making his entrance, which was pretty cool with the cameraman following him from behind and stuff and him doing his entrance. But then all of a sudden, he gets attacked from behind by Ludwig Kaiser getting hit in the back of the leg with a chop block and Kaiser going after Sheamus's leg and stuff with a bunch of referees and officials pulling uh, Ludwig Kaiser off of Sheamus. So yeah, that's what happened there. But the match is still up next. Sheamus versus Ludwig Kaiser one-on-one -on -one up next on Monday Night Raw. And later on tonight, we're going to be seeing Damian Priest versus Rey Mysterio uh, and much more. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then. So the next thing to happen on Monday Night Raw, we get to the first match of the night. It was Sheamus versus Ludwig Kaiser 101. Now before the match started, Sheamus was making his entrance. He got attacked from behind by Kaiser. Kaiser went after his leg up until a bunch of referees and officials had pulled him off. Well then we finally get to the match. The match finally starts. It was going back and forth and everything. Kaiser was going after Sheamus' leg majority of the time in this match. But Sheamus was still trying to tough it out and all that stuff. He starts beating the hell out of Kaiser actually. Well, then Sheamus finally got Kaiser down on the mat and stuff. He goes to the corner, starts setting up for that brogue kick, and then all of a sudden, Kaiser gets back up to his feet. Sheamus runs and hit that brogue kick, but then he collapses because of his leg. And then Kaiser comes up, takes advantage by rolling up Sheamus, pinning him. One, two, Sheamus barely kicks out at two. Sheamus kept on fighting back and everything, knocks Kaiser on the ring apron, starts beating him in the chest multiple times with those punches to the chest. And then he got Kaiser up on the second turnbuckle. It looked like uh, Sheamus was going to hit White Noise onto Kaiser off the second turnbuckle, Avalanche White Noise. But Kaiser got off his shoulders, uh, kicks him right in the back of the leg, which knocks Sheamus off the second turnbuckle. And then that's when Kaiser pins Sheamus for the one, two, three. So, yeah, that's what happened there. It was a good match. I'll give that match three stars. That's why I'll give it. it was a good one between Sheamus and Ludwig Kaiser. But, yeah, 
Uh, Ludwig Kaiser defeated Sheamus, and I think this feud will definitely be continuing. But yeah, that's what happened there. But then, after that match, we actually see Finn Balor with J.D. McDonough backstage, and he's talking to Dominic Mysterio in the locker room. And Finn Balor is telling Dominic, you know, what was he doing out there? And then Dominic was like, I didn't do nothing. It ain't like I got... I don't know why a bunch of women is attracted to me and all that stuff. And then Finn was like, that's right. You didn't do absolutely nothing out there. And then, you know, both of them was going at it and stuff, just talking about that stuff. And then Finn was like, look, you got to be careful and stuff. And then all of a sudden, the World Heavyweight Champion, Damian Priest, comes up. And Damian Priest starts saying, is everything good? And then he goes like, do you want to talk about something, Dominic? And then Finn was like, no, it's all good. We already discussed about this. And Damian was like, good. And then Damian looks at me and goes like, have you been talking to Rhea about this? Is she all good? And Dominic says that he's been giving her space. So, yeah, that's what happened there. And, yeah, uh, Damian was like, all right, whatever. You know what? Uh, you know, Finn got his dragon lead tonight. He says that he's the guy, uh, Rey Mysterio, in the main event. And the Judgment Day is going to be showing everybody why they run Monday Night Raw. So, yeah, that's what Damian Perry says. But, yeah, up next it will be... Dragon Lee versus Finn Balor one on one up next on Monday Night Raw. So yeah, that match will be up next. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then. So the next thing to happen on Monday Night Raw, we get to the next match of the night. It was Finn Balor with JD McDonough at ringside. The Judgment Day versus Dragon Lee 101. So, yeah, Finn Balor versus Dragon Lee 101. Oh, yeah, and actually, before I talk about this match, there was a segment that happened backstage. So, yeah, we see uh, Ricochet backstage with, still with the taped ribs and all that stuff. And then Ilya Dragunov comes up, and Ilya was like, look, I'm not going to talk, try to talk y'all of having that match with Braun Breaker tonight. He says that he wants to wish him luck and all that stuff. And uh, Ricochet says that, you know, he got to handle Braun Breaker tonight, and then after he handles him, they can take care of their business. So, yeah, that's what Ricochet says. And, yeah, uh, Ilya Dragunov wished him luck. But, yeah, then we get to the match, Dragon Lee versus Finn Balor. This match, it was a pretty good one. Uh, Dragon Lee was trying to do everything that he could do to try to beat Finn Balor. He had set out Powerbomb at one point, only getting a two count out of it. And then Dragon Lee climbs up the top turnbuckle at one point. Um, J.D. McDonough was trying to get into the ring, and the referee was trying to stop him from getting in and all that stuff. And while the referee was distracted, Carlito comes up sweeping Dragon Lee's legs, and then Dragon Lee pretty much hits his nuts on the top turnbuckle. Balor climbs up there, and Balor, I guess, was trying to hit, like, a superplex onto him or something. Dragon Lee knocks him off the top turnbuckle, and then after he knocks him off the top turnbuckle, he jumps off the top turnbuckle onto Carlito outside the ring with a crossbody. He starts beating the hell out of Carlito. JD McDonough comes running up. Uh, Dragon Lee hits a super kick on him, laying him out. Lee gets back into the ring, and as soon as he gets back into the ring, Finn Balor hits him with that shotgun drop kick into the corner. He climbs up the top turnbuckle and jumps off with a coup de gras onto Dragon Lee, and then he pins him for the three count. So, yeah, Finn Balor defeated Dragon Lee tonight in a one-on-one -on -one match. That's what happened. Pretty good match uh, for that match and what happened after the match. I'll give it three and a half stars as well. I'll give it, it was good. But, yeah, then after the match ended, we see Carlito and, and uh, J.D. McDonough and Finn Balor attacking Dragon Lee after the match. But then Braun Strowman and Rey Mysterio comes running down, making the save. Rey Mysterio is checking on Dragon Lee, and uh, Strowman knocks Balor and JD out the ring, and then uh, his Carlito as well, knocking them all three out the ring. And he was starting to do that train, and then all of a sudden, uh, Braun Strowman gets out the ring, about to run into uh, the Judgment Day and Carlito, but they quickly jumped over the barricade. So, yeah, they saved themselves tonight on Raw. But, yeah, that's what happened there. Pretty good stuff. Uh, and up next, we're going to be seeing the Intercontinental Champion, Sami Zayn, up next on Raw. See what he got to say. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then. So, the next thing to happen on Monday Night Raw, we get to the next segment of the night. But before I talk about this segment, we got to talk about the Judgment Day. So, yeah, we see uh, Damian Priest and all them talking backstage. And, uh, you know, Carlito's with them as well and all that stuff. And Damian Priest is coming how you know, that he gets to take care of Rey Mysterio, but then he says that, you know, that Carlito's been tagging along and stuff, and then he needs to hold up his chair, and what he needs to do is to go ask Adam Pearce for a match against Braun Strowman tonight, because they need to take care of that Braun Strowman problem. So, yeah, that's what Damian Priest says, and then the Judgment Day walks off, 
and Carlito was like, that is not cool. And then all of a sudden, our truth comes up, and truth was reminiscing about the Judgment Days, uh, the Judgment Day memories and all that stuff, talking about how, you know, when he was down, they kicked him. And you know what? When he was up, they still kicked him. So, yeah, uh, that's what our truth was saying. He says those were the best days of his life. Miss comes up, and he goes like, we're the world tag team champions, and you're saying that was the best days of your life, and then uh, Truth tells him is that, you know, that he's too much involved with the Judgment Day and stuff, so yeah, that's what was happening there. Uh, funny stuff right there. He's obsessed with the Judgment Day, but yeah, then we get to the next segment of the night where we see the Intercontinental Champion, Sami Zayn. He walks out there into the ring, and pretty much he starts calling out Chad Gable because, you know, he wants to talk to him about what's been going on and stuff, so yeah, that's what he starts doing. But then, instead of Chad Gable coming out, we see Otis, Akira Tozawa, and Maxine Dupree, Alpha Academy. They come out there, and Maxine gets a note from Chad Gable, and then Maxine starts reading the note, talking about how Chad Gable's been taking care of a bunch of losers, like the person that was acting like a ninja backstage, or the person that lost the money in the bait and briefcase, acting like a little kid, or the person that has a fake Barbie doll. So yeah, that's what... Chad Gable was talking about, and he says that the only way he'll come out there is if he pretty much gets a match for the Intercontinental Championship and all that stuff. Other than that, he does not care. And Sami Zayn was like, well, you know what? Fine. He gets that match at Clash of, at the Clash of the Castle. Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable for the Intercontinental Championship. That's what Sami says. And then uh, Sami says that he wants to talk to Alpha Academy. He says, how much longer y'all going to be dealing with this crap? And then all of a sudden, we see Chad Gable come up from behind, attacking Sami Zayn, beating him down and everything, grabbing him, hitting the German suplex onto him and all that stuff, laying him out. Otis is like, you know, does not want to see this. Same for the rest of them. And then uh, Gable picks up Sami, and he tells Otis to hit him. Well, Otis kind of refuses to, so uh, Chad Gable throws Sami down, goes over there to Otis, starts pushing him and slaps him and tells him that he's worthless and all that stuff for not doing that and then all of a sudden he's about to hit Otis but then Akira Tozawa stops him by putting his hand on to uh Chad Gable's chest and then Chad Gable starts pushing Tozawa telling him that he's worthless and he's about to hit him up until Maxine stops him and then uh Chad Gable looks at Maxine and goes like you know what if you want me to stop so bad how about you get on your knees and beg so Maxine gets on her knees and starts begging and then Chad Gable tells her to get up and he tells Tozawa and Maxine to get out of the ring and then they get on the ring apron and then uh Sammy turns Chad Gable around starts going at it with him beating him down and all that stuff and then uh Otis has back turn and he's talking to Maxine and uh Tozawa on the ring apron and then all of a sudden Gable gets back up grabbing Sammy and then throws him into Otis which Otis accidentally knocks down Tozawa and Maxine off the ring apron uh, and then, you know, Otis looking at both of them, frustrated and all that stuff about what just happened. Chad Gable's blaming it on Sammy. Sammy's blaming it on Gable and all that stuff. And then Otis couldn't do whatever he wants to do. And then he just grabs Sammy and hits the world's strongest slam on the Sammy Zane, laying him out. Chad Gable's laughing and all that stuff. Otis gets out the ring, carrying Tozawa and Maxine to the back while Chad Gable's holding up the Intercontinental Championship and all that. So yeah, that's what happened there. Pretty good stuff. But then after that segment, we see Adam Pearce backstage watching all this on the TV monitor. And then all of a sudden, Braun Breaker comes up. And he goes, like, oh, that's your champion? I can easily lay him out and stuff like that. See, so yeah, that's what Breaker says. And then, uh, you know, Adam Pearce is like, what the hell do you want? And then Braun Breaker says that he wants to congratulate him for giving him a real opponent tonight, like Ricochet. And he says he's still going to break him in half. But he's still pissed off about not being in the King of the Rings tournament. So, yeah, that's what Braun Breaker says. But yeah, up next, it'll be Braun Breaker versus Ricochet one on one up next on Raw. So yeah, that match will be up next. And yeah, I'll see you guys later until the next thing that happens on Monday Night Raw. See you guys later. Till then. So the next thing that happened on Monday Night Raw. Now, before we talk about the next match of the night, we got to talk about a segment that happened backstage. So yeah, we see, uh, you know, Maxine Dupree and Akira Tozawa still hurting and stuff. Otis talking to him backstage, but then all of a sudden Chad Gable comes up, and Gable looks at Maxine and goes like, you know what, you, you did pretty good, you're a great actor out there, and then Maxine's like, I'm actually hurt, and he goes like, 
look, she's still acting as great. And then all of a sudden, he looks at Tazawa and he goes like, you did great too. And then Tazawa was like, I'm hurting too. And then <laughs> Chad Cable looks at me and he goes like, hey, you'll get better. And then he just looks at Otis, looking pissed off at Otis. And then he looks at him and he goes like, that's why you're my number one guy. And then gives him a big kiss on the cheek and stuff. And yeah, he says that Alpha Academy did pretty good tonight. And what they're going to do is, is that at Clash at the Castle, he says that they're going to win his Intercontinental Championship. So yeah, that's what Chad Gable says. Uh, and then after that, we get to the next match of the night. It was Braun Breaker versus Ricochet 101. Braun Breaker was going after Ricochet's ribs the majority of the time in this match, beating him the hell down, throwing him onto the barricade and stuff. Ricochet starts coming back at the ending a little bit, hitting a Tornado DDT onto Braun Breaker, hitting a Lion Saw off the second rope, getting a two count and stuff. And then Ricochet climbs up the top turnbuckle. He jumps off, but Breaker moves out the way. Ricochet lands on his feet. Well, then Breaker runs to Ricochet. Ricochet hits a super kick on the Braun Breaker, laying him out. And then he waited for Breaker to get back up. He hits the recoil onto Breaker. He pins him. One, two. Breaker barely kicked out at two. Ricochet then climbs up the top turnbuckle. But then Breaker quickly climbs up there, hitting a Frankensteiner onto Ricochet, which was insane. And then... Ricochet got back up to his feet, and Braun Breaker pretty much broke Ricochet in half by hitting him with that crazy-ass spear, pinning him for the one, two, three. So, yeah, Braun Breaker defeated Ricochet tonight in a one-on-one -on -one match. That's what happened. Pretty good match for that match. I'll give it three and a half stars as well. Give it a great match between Braun Breaker and Ricochet right there. But then after the match ended, Breaker grabs Ricochet, tosses him out of the ring, starts tearing apart the steel steps, and he's about to smash Ricochet's head in with those steel steps. A bunch of referees and officials and stuff start, comes out there trying to stop Breaker, and then all of a sudden, Ilya Dragunov comes running up. Braun Breaker throws the steps at him. Ilya ducks it, and then he punches Breaker in the face, which knocks him over the barricade, and yeah. That's what happened there. It looks like we're going to see a match between them two next week. But yeah, that's what happened there. Pretty good stuff. Like I said, for that match and stuff, I'll give it three and a half stars. That's why I'll give it good stuff. But then after that, we see Dragon Lee all upset about losing his match tonight against Finn Balor. Zelina Vega and Rey Mysterio told him, hey, everything will be okay. You know, the OWO is going to still do good and all that stuff. And he says that he still got to take care of Damian Priest tonight. And he's going to do that. So yeah, that's what uh, Rey Mysterio says. But yeah, later on tonight, it'll be Damian Priest versus Rey Mysterio one-on-one -on -one in the main event for tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then. So the next thing that happened on Monday Night Raw, we get to the next match of the night. It was Natalia versus Kiana James one-on-one. -on -one. Kiana James making her in-ring debut on Monday Night Raw. Uh, before she had that match, Jackie Redman comes up interviewing Kiana James backstage. And Kiana James was talking about how she's been underneath the learning tree of Adam Pearce and all that stuff. And she's going to show Natalia and everybody else who Kiana James is. So, yeah, that's what she was saying right there. But then we get to the match. It was So, yeah, we get to the match. And this match, it was an okay match. Uh, both of these women beating the hell out of each other. Kiana James going at their... Uh, Natalia and stuff, but Natalia starts beating down Kiana James, trying to lock on that sharpshooter, but uh, Kiana James pulling on the ring apron skirt. Referee had to get her to stop doing that, and then Kiana James kicks Natalia in the knee and pushes her away, and then she hits the 401k onto Natalia, pinning her for the three count. So yeah, Kiana James defeated Natalia. So for that match, I'll just give it one and a half stars. That's why I'll give that one. But yeah, then after that match happened, we see. Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston, the New Day, talk backstage. And, yeah, they were somehow they're going to be taking on the Authors of Pain tonight and show them what other New Day rocks and all that stuff. And, yeah, that's what they were saying there. But then Karrion Cross comes up, and Cross was talking about how, you know, the power of positivity is dead. And then Kingston is like, well, it's not dead, and I will show you who can hit hard and stuff. So, yeah, that's what Kingston says. And he walks off, and then Karrion Cross uh, walks around Xavier Woods. And he says that, you know, after tonight, he don't got to follow Kofi Kingston no more. So, yeah, that's what he tells Xavier Woods. But, yeah, that's what happened there. And uh, still to come later on tonight, I'm going to be seeing the New Day versus the Authors of Pain later on tonight in a tag team match. Not only that, we'll see Damian Priest versus Rey Mysterio in the main event. But up next, we're going to be seeing Braun Strowman versus Carlito one-on-one -on -one up next on Raw. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then. 
So the next thing that happened on Monday Night Raw. Now, before we talk about the next match of the night, we got to talk about a segment that happened backstage. So, yeah, we see Natalia walking backstage, and Sonya Deville comes up and says, uh, you want to talk? And then Natalia was like, yeah, I'm getting sick and tired of all this and all that. And then all of a sudden, Sonya sees uh, Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler. She goes like, let me go talk to them right quick. And then she walks up to them, talking to them about Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill being there. And then they was like, yeah, we called them there. And in the background, you can see Isla Dawn and Alba Fire watching all this as well. And, uh, you know, Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark was talking about how they're starting to believe that Sonya Deville don't even respect them. So, yeah, that's what he was talking about there. Uh, but, yeah, that's what happened there. And then after that, uh, they walked away. And then we get to the next match of the night. It was Braun Strowman versus Carlito 101. So, yeah, we get to the match. This match is going all right. Uh, Braun Strowman is beating down Carlito. Then we see JD McDonough and Finn Balor come up, uh, getting on the ring apron. They get off. They get knocked off the apron by Strowman. And then uh, Carlito was trying to backstab her roll to Strowman, but Strowman don't fall. Carlito hits his back on the mat, and then all of a sudden Strowman grabs him in the back of the neck, hitting that reverse choke slam onto Carlito, and then he pins him for the one, two, three. So yeah. Braun Strowman defeated Carlito tonight in a one-on-one -on -one match, but then after the match ended, you know, Finn Balor and JD McDonough gets into the ring trying to attack Braun Strowman, but he starts beating them down, and then Dominic comes up hitting a chop block to the back of the leg on the Strowman, and then he grabs a steel chair and tries to hit Strowman, but Strowman knocks the chair off his hands. Dominic gets scared. He gets out of the ring. Strowman gets out of the ring as well. He's walking up to Dominic while Dominic is on the floor and all that stuff, and then Liv Morgan comes out there getting face-to-face -face with Braun Strowman, telling him don't hurt Dominic and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden, that's when Carlito and the rest of the Judgment Day comes up attacking Strowman outside of the ring. Strowman starts beating them down as well, throws JD back into the ring. Strowman tries to get back into the ring, but he starts getting beat with the steel chair by JD, and JD's beating him down in the knee with the chair with uh, Finn Balor and Carlito beating him down as well. So, yeah, uh, the Judgment Day laid out Braun Strowman, and the same for Carlito doing that as well. But then, after that, we see Liv Morgan, Dominic Mysterio face-to-face -face outside of the ring and stuff. Liv getting closer to Dominic, but then Finn Balor quickly gets out of the ring, cock-blocking once again. He gets out and gets face-to-face -face with Liv, saying no. So, yeah, uh, that's what happened there. But, yeah, uh, up next we're going to be seeing Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill on Raw up next. So, yeah, uh, for the match, by the way, with Carlito and Braun Strowman, I'll give it one and a half stars because of what happened after a match well i'll give it to you so yeah uh that's why i'll give it see you guys later till then so the next thing to happen on monday night raw we get to the next segment of the night which leads into a match so yeah we see the wwe women's tag team champions bianca belair and jay cargill they come out there to the ring and pretty much they start calling out Shayna baszler and so we start because you know they brought them to Raw and stuff. So, yeah, that's what happened there. And then Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark comes out there. And pretty much, it was somehow they're going to be the ones to defeat Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill and bring the women's tag team titles back to Monday Night Raw and all that stuff. So, yeah, that's what they was talking about there when they get their opportunity. And then all, both teams starts arguing. Adam Pearce comes out there. Adam Pearce is like, well, how about this? So now, we're going to have this match happening right now. Bianca Belair versus Jay Car uh, Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill versus Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark in a tag team match for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. So yeah, we'll get that match in the way. Both of these women, uh, both of these tag teams, beating the hell out of each other and everything inside of the ring. Bianca and Zoe's going at it. Shayna Baszler and uh, Jay Cargill was going at it because uh, Zoe and Shayna was trying to hit their tag team finish move onto Bianca. Bianca hits the back body drop on the Zoe. Uh, Shayna got dragged out the ring by Jade. Jade throws her into the still steps, and Jade runs to uh, Shayna, but Shayna moves out the way. And Jade hits the still steps with her back, and then Bianca grabs Zoe, hits the uh, KOD onto Zoe inside the ring. But before she could go for the pin, she gets attacked by Alba Fire, Isla Dawn, which causes disqualification. So yeah, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill defeated Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark in the tag team match to retain. Their WWE Women's Tag Team Championships by disqualification. So, yeah, they was beating the hell out of them. Jane Cargill was trying to help Bianca, but she was getting beat up as well. Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark at Alba Fire and Isla Dawn's beating the hell out of the Tag Team Champions. And they laid out Bianca and Jade while Isla Dawn and Alba Fire was standing tall. And Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark were standing tall on the other side of the ring. So, yeah, 
that's wrapping there for the match. What happened after the match? I'll give it all two and a half stars as well. Give it, but it looks like we're going to be seeing a triple threat tag team match for the women's tag team titles at Clash of the Castle. So yeah, that's what happened there. Pretty good stuff. But then after that, we see Damian Priest getting interviewed by uh, Jackie Redman backstage, and Priest was talking about how he's getting sick and tired of hearing about the Liv Morgan stuff, and he says that he's going to be taking care of Rey Mysterio tonight and go to Clash of the Castle. And then Drew McIntyre comes up. He says, oh, what a great world champion. And Damian Priest is like how, told me how his life has been going great. How about Drew's? And that's what he was talking about there. And he says that you know, it ain't going to be going so great after Clash of the Castle. So, yeah, that's where Damian Priest tells Drew. And he walks away. But, yeah, still to come later on tonight, Rey Mysterio versus Damian Priest one-on-one -on -one in the main event. But, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Until the next thing, happens on Monday Night Raw. See you guys later. Till then. So the next thing to happen on Monday Night Raw. Now, before we talk about the next match of the night, we got to talk about a few segments that happened before that match. And yeah, uh, so yeah, we see main event Jey Uso. He comes out there. He's coming through the crowd and all that stuff. And he got some stuff to say. He was talking about, like, if everybody remember what happened last year during the summertime at Money in the Bank time, where, you know, him and his brother Jimmy was taking on Solo and Roman Reigns in the Bloodline Civil War match. So, yeah, that's what he was talking about there. And then he was uh, talking about how he gets big plans this summer. And his plans is to climb up a ladder and win the Money in the Bank ladder match. So, yeah, that's what Jay Uso says. And, yeah, he gets his eyes set on the Money in the Bank ladder match. But then after that, we see Jackie Redman interviewing Lyra Valkyria backstage. And Lyra was talking about the same thing. How, you know, after hearing what Jay Uso just said, she says that she got her eyes on the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. So, yeah, that's what Lyra Valkyria says there. But then she gets attacked from behind by Io Sky. Io Sky starts beating her down and everything, laying Lyra Valkyria out. So, yeah, that's what happened there. But then after that, we get to the next match of the night. It was Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods, The New Day versus. Razor Acom, the authors of Pain, with Karrion Cross, Paul Ellering, and Scarlett, fin the final testament tonight in a tag team match. So, yeah, we get to the match, and this match, it was okay. Uh, Acom gets tagged in, he's going out of Woods, and Woods is getting beat down. But then at one point, Scarlett gets on the ring apron, distracting the referee. Karrion Cross walks over there to Kingston, Kingston gets off the apron, getting face to face with Cross. And then when Woods was trying to tag in Kingston, he couldn't tag him in because Kingston was not up there. And then that's when the AOP comes up and uh, beats down Woods. Uh, and Razor gets tagged in. They hit their tag team finish move. What a rush onto Woods, pinning him for the three count. So, yeah, the authors of Pain defeated the New Day tonight in a tag team match. And then Kingston gets in the ring checking on Woods. So, yeah, that's what happened there for that match and all that stuff. I'll give it two and a half stars as well. I'll give that one. But, yeah. Then, after that, we see Jackie Redman interviewing uh, Alba Fire, Isla Dawn, and they was talking about how they got their eyes set on the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. So, yeah, that's what he was talking about there. But, yeah, that's why they attacked Bianca Belair and Jay Cargo, they explained. But, up next, it will be the next match of the night. It will be the main event. It will be the World Heavyweight Champion, Damian Priest versus Rey Mysterio, one-on-one -on -one in the main event. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then. So the next thing to happen on Monday Night Raw, we get to the main event. It was the World Heavyweight Champion Damian Priest versus Rey Mysterio one on one in the main event. So yeah, we get to this match, and this match it was a good one. Uh, Priest was beating the hell out of Mysterio at the ending, and uh, he got Rey Mysterio up on the top turnbuckle. Then he was trying to hit the Razor's Edge onto Mysterio off the top turnbuckle, but Mysterio verse, reverses it into a nice hurricanrana onto Priest. Uh, back into the ring, and then Priest was getting back up. Ray drop kicks him in the back, which knocks Priest onto the second rope. And then Ray hits a 619 onto Priest, and then jumps over the top rope with the splash onto Priest, and he pins him. One, two, Damian barely kicks out at two. Well, then after that happened, we see uh, Finn Balor and JD McDonough coming down to the ring, uh, getting on the ring. Well, actually, before they actually come up, actually. Carlito comes up, my fault. Carlito comes up trying to distract Ray, and then Dragon Lee comes up beating down Carlito at ringside. And then after that was going on, we then see Finn Balor and JD McDonough come down, and they start beating the hell out of Dragon Lee after that. Uh, numbers game catching up, and then that's when Rey Mysterio comes up hitting a corkscrew splash onto crossbody onto uh, the Judgment Day, laying them out, and then he gets back into the ring but climbs up the top turnbuckle 
Chris grabs him and he pulls him off the turnbuckle and then he hits a South of Heaven on to Rey Mysterio and then he pins him for the one, two, three. So yeah, Damian Priest defeated Rey Mysterio tonight in a one-on-one -on -one match, but then after the match ended, Drew McIntyre attacks Damian Priest from behind, beating him down and all that stuff. He picks him up, hits the Future Shock DDT onto Priest, laying him out. He goes to the corner, setting up for the Claymore up until J.D. McDonough and Finn Balor comes into the ring and then uh, McIntyre had to deal with them, uh, beating them down as well. And then he turns around, he gets laid out by Priest and, you know, him and Priest is outside of the ring and then uh, Drew starts getting upper hand again and then Drew starts tearing apart the announce table, but Priest grabs him by the throat and choke slams Drew McIntyre through the announce table, laying him out. And then the Judgment Day and Carlito standing tall over Drew McIntyre. So yeah, that's wrapping there for the match and what happened after the match and all that stuff. I'll give it three stars. That's why I'll give it. it was good stuff. But yeah, for match of the night, I gotta say it was Braun Breaker and Ricochet. That match was really good. Uh, but yeah, uh, tonight's episode of Raw, I'll give it nine stars. That's why I'll give it. it was an okay episode. But yeah, that's been my Monday Night Raw reviews. Uh, like, subscribe. Subscribe to TNW Wrestling on YouTube. Subscribe to my other channel, Word of Chris. And subscribe to this channel, Chris McDaniels. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and both my TikToks. I'll be down there in the description box. And I'll see you guys later for tomorrow night's NXT reviews. Uh, I'll be talking about NXT tomorrow night, AEW Dynamite on Wednesday. I'll be having my NXT Battleground predictions up probably like Thursday or something like that. Uh, SmackDown reviews on Friday and the NXT Battleground, which is... I think this Sunday. Uh, yeah, it is this Sunday. What am I talking about? Uh, I'll be talking about that as well. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Till then.